we all work for BT Sport for varying different lengths um, and obviously BT Sport are one of the main sports broadcasters in the UK um, with rights to the Premier League, Champions League, uh, Rugby, MotoGP, WWE, a wide um, range of sports. Um, so an intro to me first and then I'll, I'll, I'll hand it over to you guys. Um, so my name's Rob Jones and I'm the managing editor for the BT Sport website and the BT Sport apps. I've been at BT Sport for just over five years now, which has gone pretty quickly. Um, and yeah, so I look after a team that, 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 that manage both btsport.com, um, uh, all the content within there and the BT Sport apps. And some of them will be on your mobile, some of them will be on tablets, and some of them will be on, on large screen devices like your Xbox, PlayStation, TVs and that kind of thing. And um, yeah, Ross, Ross is, is part of that team. So yeah, Ross, do you want to say your name, job title, and then just talk us a little bit about um, yeah, your, your role and your day-to-day your -day, your day -day job? Yeah, no problem. So yeah, I'm Ross Kelsall, and as Rob says, I work in his team, looking after the content on the website and the app. Um, so generally, our our sort of our remit is kind of building up to the big, big games, big boxing event, big UFC fight, wherever that be. And part of that will be promoting video content that um, you'll see on the TV channels. If you've had an interview with a Conor McGregor or a Cristiano Ronaldo, that's the sort of thing we'll be promoting to, to kind of tease people into the website, uh, into watching the live games. Um, and also within our team, we have like a, a group of writers who will basically be providing information about uh, how you can watch said event or uh, a preview for it, why you should be excited for the Champions League knockouts coming back, for example. Um, and then on the, the live shifts when these are happening, we'll be staffed up and whoever's on shift will basically be making sure people can watch the live streams on, on their phone or, or laptop, as Rob said. Um, and then also, if there's any great goals or knockouts or any sort of standout clips that people are going to want to watch back, we'll be making sure we package them up with um, a headline, a picture, and sort of trying to draw people in to kind of give you the best feel for what, what we've shown. And then afterwards, we'll be kind of reviewing all that, whether that be, again, in article form, a kind of a match report, if you will, a summary of what, what's happened on the channels or highlights from the game or the, the race. Um, and kind of offering that, that coverage across all of our sports um, and, I guess, all year round, because BT Sport and sport is, is non-stop. Matt, I know you, you work closely with, with Ross and the team. How how does your what is your role and how does that that differ um yeah so i'm um i'm one of two social media managers so um overseeing all of the non fight sports so football rugby um cricket moto gp primarily um and i guess similar to ross in terms of a lot of it is trying to um create hype and excitement ahead of um most live events but especially the, the big key live events so that's um generally like moto gp race weekends um cricket so we've got a lot of english cricket coming up um and then yeah premier league weekends um and champions league europa league um and then yeah rugby coverage weekend to weekend um but yeah of diff differs to us in that it's more on social media so across facebook twitter instagram uh, and YouTube um, and yeah it's it's uh, part of it is the more boring stuff in terms of uh, graphics and like kind of um, just information on when things are so that people who follow BT know when when and where they can watch these things um, and sort of raise an awareness that they're on um, and the other half is a lot cooler um, and creating nice edits, um, having sort of idea sessions of how we can like best hype up an event, like particularly the Champions League um, coming up. Um, and then there's another side to it, which is the live element. So there'll be a team on shift whenever anything live is going on, um, clipping up the best moments. And they're the ones that um, you'll see on 
Twitter and Facebook and Instagram of the kind of the great goals, the great moments, the fights and, and things like that. Um, so yeah, it's very, um, it's split into two parts, the kind of big promotion side of it and then the, the live coverage side of it. So you can, I, I, think, I think you've understood it. You three have got, I would say, hence why I've got you guys involved, probably three of the coolest jobs in the business, I would say, personally. Um, Andrew, what, t- tell us about your, your role. Yeah, so um, I'm a digital presenter here at BT Sport. Um, I've been here, just like you, Rob, I've been here for like just over five years and I was just going qu- crazy quick. I didn't start as a presenter. It's not all glory in my story. I started... <laughs> I started as an um, apprentice, um, so I joined BT as an apprentice in 2015. I was logging, um, so it's like basically I was like watching uh, all the stuff we do across the channel, so whether it's like live sport or like interviews or whatever, um, and I used to basically identify the key moments in those things. So if I was watching a game, I would like identify like the free kicks, the fouls, the goals, etc. So when producers need certain clips, they can just look up the logs and then be able to pick up those clips. I did that for two years. Um, and then the, the good thing about that was um, logging was shift work. So I used to work a five day week and a three day week. So like some of my days off, I would come in and like, just like shadow different teams, um, kind of seeing what I wanted to do. Like I did some of like, that stuff with uh, production and OBs. I did like promos and I did digital. And obviously digital was what the team I wanted to get into. Um, luckily, but my, my, my two years of apprenticeship was ending. There was a role that um, a digital um, junior producer role came up. And because I had been shadowing the team, I kind of had like a, a foot in the door already. So I applied for that, ended up getting the digital role. Um, and literally at that point, for that year, I was literally doing anything. Like I was mad. I would, one day I'll be like getting clips for him and then I might be on like an OB somewhere, just doing anything I could kind of get my hands on, on, on doing everything. Um, and then I started doing like Instagram stories. Yeah. Uh, it's like boxing events behind the scenes, that kind of stuff. Then I started hosting Instagram stories. And then we had a, and then we had a, a workshop at Google. And when I ended up pitching up um, what I wore idea, and then Mike basically said, yeah, I could, <laughs> I could host the first one. And I was thinking, yeah, oh, is this going to be. Seen it, Andrew, what, what is what I wore? So what I was uh, is a show that we have where I interview footballers literally based on the football shirts like the one you got on today. And we kind of go through their life and career through their shirts. Um, it was a very vague idea at, at first, and then we, it ended up working. And then I, they said I can do the first one we shot was with Deli Ali. But I thought it was going to be like an in-house thing, in it? Like, I'll just, just just how it looks like. But then we did like, I think Rio got a wind of it and wanted to do it. So we did Rio the next week. Um, yeah, it went out and it was like trending and stuff like that. So it was just like it was mine from there. <laughs> so I mean, taking off, <laughs> yeah, taking over. And so, then through that opportunity, I've, I've ended up like doing like others, like sit down interviews and um, hosting different things for VC as well. So, how did you get into um, the apprenticeship initially? So basically, I was I used to kick ball in it. So I was playing for Harrogate Town in Leeds. Um, and it didn't really work out, so I was coming back to London, innit? So my mum basically said, you can't come back to the house unless you go uni, innit? <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, nah, mum, I don't want to go uni. Because at this point, like, like, all my friends, all the friends I knew that went uni, like, they didn't do a job that they went uni for, innit? So I'm like, mum, it's like, uni's mad expensive. I'm probably going to not do a job that I'm going to go uni for. So I didn't really see, like, the, the, the purpose of it. So I was like, let me try and get an apprenticeship. So like I was applying for like a load of apprenticeships. Like I must have applied for like a hundred apprenticeships, and I didn't get through one stage. So then I was I was gonna give up. I was about to say, "Yo, I'm gonna go uni," and then I quickly one one last look. I looked at it, and it was like the BT Sport one. It was on the Gov UK website. So I just applied, and he had to do like an essay of why he should join the job. Obviously, I was gassing myself up in that, and then <laughs> and then yeah, it's just like you just had a recruitment stage, and then there was like six roles. And it was like a hundred people at the start, and it ended up ended up narrowing it down to six people. So, and I was one of the six, luckily. Nice. And what about Ross, Matt? How how did you kind of get into your current roles? What were the steps you took? Um, for me, it kind of started quite a long time ago. And my first sort of steps was actually covering um, 
basically my friends in the football team at school and I started a sport section on the school website. Um, so I kind of always knew I wanted to do something in sports or sort of covering live sport. Um, and after that, it was kind of work experience has been the big thing for me. Um, and that was the same at school, then at university. Um, so I did a history degree, which has, uh, as Andrew said, not, exactly. not remotely related. <laughs> yeah. Um, but there's lots of sort of, there's, even though it kind of doesn't seem related, there's lots of skills that cross over. So whether that's like, if we're now doing an interview or I'm doing an article, that it's important to have like, the research skills that I learn, the interview skills, if you're interviewing pe people to do part of your essay, and then how you then deliver that, that article to people, because you, know, you, you have to learn how to write for different audiences, write in different ways. So there's definitely, although it's not sort of strictly speaking linked, there's definitely skills that I picked up from doing that. And it's the same sort of thing in terms of, of covering the sport really. So it's again, different skills needed, but being able to, to write quickly, write succinctly and, and know how to cover these events were partly things that I learned at university, but also on work experience. Um, and that was basically similar to Andrew, just sticking in applications, asking to, please, can you let me come and shadow you for a week, a fortnight, whatever that will be. And I did various placements, um, but the Mirror newspaper at Sky Sports, I did a week there, sort of trying to get a feel for newspapers, uh, digital productions, uh, TV. Um, and after that, I did a, a kind of postgraduate course, like a conversion course, I guess you call it, um, into journalism. And that was to kind of get a bit more of the kind of practical skills that I would need to so learn in how to yeah, go to a live match and actually how you have to write 300 words and it has to be done five minutes after the full time and when there's two goals and extra time how you still sort it out yeah exactly so kind of learning to deal with that that live environment and that that quick the pressure of doing it um and then again in that lots of work experience and some of that was learning how to you had to go to court and learn how to cover court events to make sure you understand all the legal side of of journalism and you know anything you say can is covered on, the, on that sort of front um, and then from there it was similar to Andrew again applying for lots of jobs and luckily there was one going up BT Sport um, actually doing the, the news ticker which we no longer have but that's what I initially came in to do and I was I was kind of similar in that. The tickers for those that know the thing that goes across the bottom or on the on the side yeah, so Sky Sports News, I guess, is your sort of your best example of kind of breaking news. Um, and that's what, what I kind of did to start with. And then I gradually did uh, kind of similar to Matt, did some stuff on social media. Um, and then before moving into to your team, so kind of a lot of jobs across the digital department is kind of what I've done as well. Matt, how about you, mate? How did you, how did you get into this role and, and, and any other roles? Probably slightly more kind of traditional route um i did uh i always thought you know i want to write about sport um and like be working in sport in some sort of way growing up um i initially thought i was going to be a everton manager one day but um didn't <laughs> quite pan out yeah it didn't quite pan out in, in it like that um but i studied sports journalism at uni um which sounds really like cool and sporty but it was basically journalism with an extra class on top of it that was sport related. So um, I always think it's, it sounds slightly more fun than it actually is. Um, it's still quite um, sort of, yeah, just straight journalism. Um, and then I, a little bit like Ross, in a way, I used to write match reports for a local, I don't know, um, Wildstone Football Club. Um, so in the, they're in the National League. They play about uh, five minutes walk down the road from me. And I spent a year doing their match previews and match reports and sitting in their little mini press box um, every Saturday. Um, and I, on, a, on a Saturday evening, I used to write for the Luton on Sunday uh, newspaper, um, covering all of the teams that you've never heard of in Bedfordshire um, in a tiny little column, which I'm not sure anyone ever really read. So, so uh, presumably the reason you did all this and like gave up all your Saturdays and stuff was just to yeah. get a bit of experience and get exactly, yeah. TV, right? 
Yeah, exactly. And then um, that was all while I was still at uni. Um, and then I left and pretty much straight after finishing in the summer from the September, I got um, a three month internship, um, a sports writing website. And we just used to churn out like transfer articles, um, like eight a day each on things that were never going to happen. But just because it was good experience of writing and um, working with people in that environment. Um, and then from there, that was that was three months. It was unpaid. I just got paid for much for um, expenses of traveling and stuff like that. Yeah. So it wasn't. It was yeah. It was kind of putting in the hard yards, hoping that it would pay off in the future. Um, and then I joined a startup company where we used to manage um, sports people's social media accounts. So um, it was great. And it was with it being a startup, they were so um, light on staff that you would get asked to do anything and everything and it was absolutely brilliant it was pure chaos um <laughs> but some of the things you did and were let do were really cool so i used to ring harry redknapp for about a year every monday morning um and get his tweets off him for the next five days um <laughs> just through little things he'd say and i'd stagger them throughout the week um which was great and i did that with loads of people that you wouldn't even people would just think they were writing them themselves and they weren't um, and then from there was conscious that with it being a startup, um, it was probably wasn't going to last forever. <laughs> um, and I needed to find something that was a bit more secure. Um, and the job came up at BT as a freelancer. Which you mean it was so, the angle you wanted to go down then? Yeah, I think from, cause that, that was much less right in a more kind of man like not managing, but posting out from Facebook accounts and Twitter accounts. And I kind of lost a bit of, um, wanting to write longer form stuff and, hadn't done it for so long that I was probably a bit out of practice and wouldn't have walked straight into a job doing that yeah. um, and became much more comfortable with shorter, snappier, more succinct stuff and trying to make cool things and graphic ideas and video ideas. And then that kind of tied in nicely when this job came up at BT Sport. Um, and yeah, that was the summer of 2016. Um, and I, yeah, I got that and then it's been, just been there since and gradually sort of worked up slightly. Nice. So, One thing I was going to say, so I don't know if you guys would agree with this. I think the, as well as kind of like volunteering and like you said, Andrew, shadowing or giving up your Saturdays, Matt, the other thing I found as well as experience, you do just pick up like contacts and doors generally open and it's not like a, an instant thing. But like um, I sort of, after I finished uni and I moved home for a year when I had no money and I needed a job, um, there was, so I'm, I'm from North Wales and there's not a great deal of sporting prowess to cover. Um, and there was a startup again, wanted to start a TV station for our local county and it was tiny, like there was hardly anything. Um, but they had a contact for a local football club. Um, and I basically went and did some work with the TV station that led to them introducing me to people at the football club. I ended up getting kind of similar to you, Matt, like a, I covered them for a year and then from there the manager of that football club he used to work uh, well, sorry he used to play with uh, a guy who was manager at Berry. so I then sort of met someone through Berry, and I could do some match reports and stuff like that and it's just weird how often things are very linked and I think as soon as you kind of start down a path someone knows someone and if you're willing to mm. put the work in I'm basically just keep asking like if you're willing to push and mm. I found that weird doors that you might not expect kind of open for you well it sounds like you've all had that to to a degree right so andrew a lot of your stuff i guess was whilst you were at bt but you were like doing shadow shifts and like making contacts and stuff within bt in the different departments that you wanted to and you guys were yeah making making contacts and doing a bit of work for free elsewhere while you were at uni or while you're doing other stuff and yeah, you never you never quite know when stuff is going to crop up. I mean, it's, it's the same for me now, right? I get quite a lot of CV sent to me all the time and I might not be looking for anyone for another six months to a year, but you never know when I, I suddenly do and then I'll, I'll be like, all right, I've got a folder in my inbox with all the CVs that I get sent and I'll just look through them and see if there's any one relevant. And it might just be luck of the draw that mm. someone sent me an email in the last few months and they, they're, they're free at that time. And, and 
I, I think it's a valid skill having um yeah reaching out to people and making the effort it shows you really you're really up for it um and stuff doesn't come to necessarily people that just sit back and, and hope but like it's people that proactively make an effort and and really try to really try and reach out to people and um build up that contacts book for sure creating your own list the luck sort of thing exactly exactly like it's probability right you you tried for loads and loads of uh, apprenticeships like ross tried for loads and loads of jobs and a lot of them won't come off and you've got to have thick skin i guess to to a degree that you're, you're not going to get it every time everyone's the same as that um but yeah the probability wise the more you go for um the more chances are that that something will come of it um so i guess inspiration wise talk talk, talk to me about you've all got pretty cool jobs as, as we've discussed talk to me about like the best thing that you've done in in your career the most exciting project that you've you've worked on andrew you you go um i think for me personally is when i did the interview with my cousin Aberry, um who's at palace like just doing the interview is like it was just like a full circle moment just did the interview on our estate where we grew up played football etc and just kind of him coming back kind of us like coming back and just walking around where we kind of used to uh, cause trouble around the, around the end <laughs> um was kind of a, like a fun moment like just like a full circle moment and then the other side of it was like when i did um what i wore with um steven gerrard it was just like obviously one of the players that that made me love football and that like, grew up on stevie okay. and, like, <laughs> yeah, just him just standing there and like being so interested in the, the questions i was asking and, and into the show was like a, a really a really special moment for me personally nah. and obviously me at the side as well <laughs> <laughs> um i think probably um I think just like the, the Champions League in general in the season before last, the knockout stage was... Um, when Liverpool was just, won, right? Unfortunately, yes, it was <laughs> when Liverpool won. Um, and for anyone watching, I'm an Everton fan and I've clipped up and posted more Liverpool girls than you would ever care to imagine <laughs> um, over the last five years. Um, and yeah, I think it was just that crazy um, period where uh, Spurs came back against Ajax and... Liverpool came back against Barcelona, then you had the Spurs Liverpool final, and it was just a crazy kind of month or so. And just being able to do loads of cool stuff around that. Um, and the games over the years, like PSG Barcelona and that comeback, and um, just sort of when it's actually like you're, you've got a passion like football and you love it as much as, you know, us guys do, for it to be your job to then be the one responsible for making the stuff and reacting to it that millions of people are liking and viewing and seeing. It's just, yeah, it's very cool and very, um, yeah, as much as like the frustrations and the hard work is, it's still like, you know, you never miss a good moment, even when you're working, just because that's that's what you're doing. Yeah. So, um, yeah, yeah, I think. You obviously love sport, right? Uh, so you love football, but do you cover sports that um, you don't like as much and you didn't know as much perhaps about and you've had to learn about? You can be honest, don't worry. I'm not going to tell you, boss. I, uh, I mean, I, I, I went to... Uh, to UFC, I think it might have been two, uh, two one five or two one four or something like that. It was in it was in New York, and I am not a UFC fan in the slightest. And uh, another one of our team was due to go there and couldn't at the last minute, and I got a late call up. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, quick, quick sub, um, and it was great. It was like um, I was like so far out of my depth, but it was really cool. Um, and yeah, I've, I mean, I'm not a UFC fan in the slightest. I'm not a huge boxing fan, but I did boxing fight weeks across the country. Um, yeah, for sure. Not, I don't have to do that as much now. But um, yeah, just kind of have to wing it for a little while. That's <laughs> um, where the skills though, right? I guess. Yeah, exactly. And I think that was, you know, one of the reasons why I was able to go on that trip is because, you know, you can, at the end of the day, you know what's going to make a good post or you, you know what's going to make a good video. You've got a good hunch. So um yeah if you've got to cover some things that you're not used to just just think of what works with what you do like and it usually will relate to this to that audience and i guess i guess bringing it back to to people that are perhaps doing work experience and stuff like that you might have to do jobs that you don't want to do necessarily um but it's about yeah that foot in the door and showing willing 
um, in order to for when those right opportunities to do come up that, that you're then kind of front of mind for for people for sure how about you ross um i was actually two came to mind um kind of the first one was similar to matt champions league thread just because i guess yeah being a big football fan that's the pinnacle so when um when the champions league final the real madrid juve one was in cardiff um and i got to go down for like a few days that was just so cool to be sort of in amongst Champions League, like the whole, all the fans there, massive buzz, but also because they kind of created this like football festival. Um, so they had like a little five side pitch in Cardiff Bay with all Champions League legends were playing and there was just like UEFA ambassadors. So basically just ex-footballers who wanted to go and watch the final were all kicking about Cardiff. It was just, yeah, it was just amazing to sort of be in amongst that and my sort of remit that weekend was to basically speak to as many ex-footballers as possible, get some quotes about that game and the summer, like the transfer window coming up. And, and it was just a chance to kind of speak to as many different people as possible. Just to pinch um, in those kind of moments, Ross, when you're just hanging around with loads of football legends. Say again? Just to pinch yourself when you're just hanging around with loads of football legends. Definitely. Well, it was like all the work was really fun, but I'm sure Matt will remember this. At the end of it, there was um, a party in Gareth Bale's bar. Unbelievable party. Yeah. <laughs> we basically just... From, from what I can remember. We all... Yeah, who, I can't remember who was there, but basically any any and every footballer was just knocking about as if they were like your best mate having a beer next year. And it was the surrealist moment of my life. Um, but... That was that was pretty. That was a really cool moment. But actually, the other one I was thinking of and kind of relates to your point of um, I'm masked on like working on things you don't know much about. When I joined BT, I knew absolutely nothing about MotoGP, and thankfully nobody asked me any questions about it in my interview because I would not have answered well. <laughs> um, but just sort of from working like because BT because uh, MotoGP is an important sport for BT, it was something that I had to. To learn about just working because as Matt says you, know, you just kind of need to know what's going on to make sure you you across what would make a good social post or what would work well on the website and so on um, and actually learning about that sport was something I really enjoyed just kind of starting from scratch and reading bits and like it can just be you know the interviews around that weekend but I also watch films of like older races just to try and understand a bit of history and sort of that culminated in me going to the British Grand Prix a couple of years ago um, at Silverstone. And that was just, again, an absolutely surreal event to just kind of have a high-vis jacket on and I could walk around the paddock and you could go in all the garages and just, it was just so weird to just kind of me to be wandering around and able to speak to all these, these riders. And, you know, it's the sort of thing where I've got one friend who is absolutely mad about MotoGP and I just kept sending him videos and making him jealous all weekend. Um, so it was just, yeah, that was a really cool moment in a couple of years to go from kind of no knowledge to being right in the middle of it all was, was really fun. Um, so let's be balanced about these things. You've gone through kind of some pretty cool things, um, drinking with footballers and walking around Silverstone and stuff. Um, is there anything that uh, is tough about any of your roles to, to any one of you? Um, I think... Like you know, like Matt, like Matt is saying, like with this, like constantly, like trying to be on top of things. I think sometimes it can get a bit, a bit, a bit like on top of you. Um, you know, if you're doing like this, sometimes I remember one time there was a week where it's like there was a UFC, Champions League, and like some other big game that was happening all in one week. Like there's times where like I did a last time I was at a stadium was Liverpool, Atletico Madrid. Um, I remember doing that. The, the no filter for that. And then I had a what I wore the next morning at nine o'clock morning. So I had to get in a cab from Manchester at like 2 a.m. straight to Leicester and I had like four hours sleep so I can get up and do the next thing. So it's a bit, it gets a bit tedious sometimes and like you just feel like a lot of, like a lot of things are happening at once and you kind of have to be a lot on top of things. So it's kind of, you kind of get like wrapped in a whirlwind sort of thing. So I think that's probably like the most difficult thing that's kind of just like keeping on top of everything that's happening because it's like interval training. It's like some days it's like some weeks it's nice, nice and calm. The next minute it's like you need two of you to be doing your job. So it's like that sort of like it's 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 long 
long hours, right? And and you you work, Matt and Ross, you you work weekends as well, right? Uh, yeah, I think one of the I think if you're gonna get into something like this, you have to be prepared for like at least you know the very start of your career. You you have to sacrifice your a lot of evenings and weekends. Um, I mean, me and me and Ross have been in the office together for many a Saturday over the years. Um, I, I manage a, a Saturday football team and I used to play in the morning, drive over to Stratford and Ross would probably see me come in my tracksuit. I should have been there like 20 minutes earlier, quickly run down, have a shower and then you're at your desk till 11 o'clock. And you're like, oh, that was a long day by the time you finish. But um, yeah, it, it eventually if you put in the hard work, it will pay off. And um, yeah, it just if, if you're going into sport, you just know that sport happens when other people have their free time because that's when people watch it. Um, so you just have to be flexible um, and um, yeah, ride it out for a while, and then you know hopefully you get into a position where um, you know you might, your job might change slightly, and you you don't do as much of the kind of live stuff. Yeah, I was going to say the same. Actually, I think it's just sort of having an acceptance that sometimes you might have to miss out on stuff, whether that's friends, family. There are definitely events that I'd have liked to have gone to. That I can't just because yeah, as Matt says, these things happen on a on a Saturday. I think as long as you're aware of that. But I guess the kickback is, yeah, on a Tuesday night when you're covering the Champions League, it's great, and everybody else is just sat at home watching it. You know, it's sort of I guess it works both ways. That sometimes you miss out on stuff, but equally you can work on a lot cooler stuff than your mate who works in IT or whatever. <laughs> you, you 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 never you never miss a good sporting event because you're working. Um, so. That's kind of sometimes the way I look at it. If you're ever frustrated and you're like, oh, you, some people will be like, oh, I can't believe I'm working tonight and missing this game. Like that will never. You're, you're working because you're covering the game, yeah. Um, which is which is really cool. Ross, there are a couple of projects and stuff that BT Sport do that that you've been a part of. Is there anything that um, any takeaways that you've had from from those? I don't know if you want to explain what what one of them might be and and anything you've learned from them. Yeah, so I did some volunteering with, well, BC Sport does work with um, a local college in like near our office in Stratford in East London. Um, and if project was basically about, well, the two, two separate ones I've worked on actually. The first one was a group of students were tasked with coming up with a new app for BT Sport. And as it's something I work on day to day, I was asked to sort of come and give the guys a bit of an overview of what our current app is and kind of the, the limitations of what they could and couldn't do. So for example, some people were saying, oh, it'd be great if when you were watching it, you could um, clip up a goal and send it to your mates on, on WhatsApp or whatever. And I was saying, like, oh, actually there'll be, there could be rights restrictions. You're not allowed to do that legally and just sort yeah. of explaining that side. Um, and then the other project I worked on was one a couple of years ago where from the college there were basically tasked with coming up with their own magazine show. Um, and the idea was um, to sort of tell sporting stories that they were interested in and various groups went and spoke to um, kind of, I guess, off the beaten track stories, I guess would be the best way to describe it. Um, so one that comes to mind was like, there's, uh, again, I think it was in East London again, there was a, a company who create skateboards and you can sort of come up with the artwork yourself to go on the back of it. And then you can use that like in the skate park nearby. And it was kind of telling that story of perhaps a sport that's not covered as much as, you know, football and UFC and things we've talked about now. Um, I think from the main thing I noticed, the kind of consistency with the students and the staff from BT working with them was just the importance of enthusiasm, like sort of being being engaged with what you're working on, being enthusiastic. And it kind of comes back to the point we made earlier of, volunteering that time whether it be Matt and me working weekend shifts now or when uh, Andrew was coming in on his days off to shadow people I think having that enthusiasm for what you're working on definitely comes through either when you're learning or when you're teaching someone and also in the product that you develop at the end I think that's that's definitely something that I know is just consistent with with everyone who worked on those projects and, and hopefully they'd say the same about me okay well, uh, well, we're going to finish up now, guys. What I'd, what I'd like from each of you briefly before we finish is just um, one piece of advice that you would give someone um, who's young, who's trying to 
get into the sports media industry. Um, don't mind who goes first. Andrew, do you want to? Yeah, I'll go first. I, my, my advice would be like, just put yourself out there. Um, the more people you know, I feel, I feel like this sport industry, especially in the media, is like a small circle and people tend to like be around and just be around people that they know. So just put, get yourself out there as much as you can whether you're running, whether you're making someone's tea for the first thing, whether you have to log like me, whether you have to shadow someone and just be around and just get as many different kinds of experiences because you'll realise once you come in, one thing definitely I realised is once I came in, there were so many different jobs I didn't know were happening. So the more you put yourself out there, the more you might have a chance to realise what you actually want to do. Right. Matt? Yeah, I think um, for me, I think I'd just say... Um, just work like work on and just be be nice and be a good sort of um, teammate because it's quite a can be quite a stressful environment sometimes and I think if you're just there's there's a lot to be said for just being someone who's easy to work with and if you just get your head down and work hard and make sure that when you're coming into contact with different people that you know they like they like you as well as what you do that will stand you in so much good stead going forward um so yeah main thing work hard um you know be dedicated um do do everything you know as if it you know with a lot of pride that it really means something to you personally but above all of that just just be um just be nice and friendly and and so that people like you and if people like you then you'll get it'll pay back it's a really simple thing matt but such a valid point and i think that's the same for any industry that you want to go into whether it's the sports industry or not um ross mine it sounds a bit odd i would say it'd be a bit cheeky if you don't ask you don't get and that's the one thing i learned that lots of people are reluctant to pick up the phone and pursue opportunities or just ask people outright so i remember once i was at um, an event with a journalist and I basically just asked him, you know, have you got a card? Can I get in touch with you? Have some work experience? And he was like, yeah, 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 fine. And when I rang him the next day, I don't think he actually expected me to ring, follow it up and say, right, well, when can I have this opportunity then? Like, when can I come in? And I think it's, it's really to push those things to kind of get your foot in the door. And then once you're in the door, again, push, can I help with this? What can I do? What can I do? And constantly drive, like no one else is going to, is going to drive that for you. And I think, yeah, generally, as long as you obviously you follow Matt's advice and you're nice about it, mm -hmm. I don't think there's anything wrong with being a bit pushy and kind of drive and stuff because that's how generally your things will happen for you on the back of it. Or once you're in a team, I think you can still kind of push and drive because generally it'll make things better for for you, your team, your your product, whatever it is you're working on. I don't think there's anything nothing wrong with that. For you. No, well, I think that kind of sums up all the advice, right? It's you're basically saying put yourself out there, be a bit be a bit pushy, forthright, but ultimately you want people to like you and give you the opportunity. So you, you, you want to be nice around it. Wicked. Guys, I really, really appreciate it. Um, solid advice. Um, and uh, I'll catch you all, I'll catch up with all you soon. All right. Cheers, Rob. Thank you, Cheers, Rob. Cheers gents. Take it easy.